All right, my friends. How's everybody doing this morning? How's the audio? Somebody shoot me a quick message. Let me know how the audio is doing here. All right. Check, check, check. Alright, got ham killer. Interest is up and the stock market's down. HRC. Gotta make sure I got all my equipment running here, my friends. Alright, how, how's the audio? Can you guys hear me okay? Make sure I got my microphone plugged in right. Fine, okay, cool. And I just realized I was on a top chat. That's why I couldn't see everybody's messages. So uh, let me swap over to live chat. All right, so now I see everybody. Got Cly, Ham Killer, HRC. Jason, Andrew, and John Metro. All right. Adam King up in the house. All right, folks. I uh, just want to welcome you to this live stream. And today I'm just drinking some coffee. And I figured I would bring some, uh, some value after uh, last night's pure entertainment segment. Hope you enjoyed that live stream. Folks, I'm shit. I'm hung over this morning. But it's a beautiful day here, folks. Coming to you live in the Philippines, from the Philippines. The weather is beautiful. I mean, there's not a cloud in the sky. I got a nice, cool breeze coming through up here. It is just beautiful weather here. You could not, not ask for better weather. We got Johnny A, Jose Gonzalez checking in from South Florida. All right, cool. All right, so a lot of people ask me about what camera equipment I use for YouTube. They're thinking about starting a YouTube channel. Um, they don't know anything about it. You know, and I think the first thing that comes to everybody's mind is what, what camera I gotta buy. Um, and you know, you know, back when I first started this channel, I did the same thing. I'm worried about what, what camera do I need to uh, start a YouTube channel with, to film uh, YouTube videos. Get John Allen in the house. Welcome, my friend. And so a lot of people ask me about this. <clears throat> and folks, you know, I'm, I'm a one-man travel show. I got my two ladies who occasionally man the camera equipment. Uh, most of the time, it's just me rolling around talking to a camera. So I just figured I would show you my gear, um, my camera gear, that is, and just uh, talk about the, the cameras that I have and the tripods and the little pieces of equipment that, <clears throat> that I use to, to run this YouTube channel. Now, am I the best source of information? Is this title, uh, you know, best camera for YouTube? Am I the, the best source of information? Uh, probably not. You know, the, the big professional YouTubers out there with, uh, with a lot of money, a lot of resources, and professional camera equipment, well, maybe you want to go check out what they have to say, but they're probably going to, they're going to explain to you their camera equipment, which is expensive. So if you're just a regular dude thinking about starting a YouTube channel and you don't have a lot of money, all right, this, this segment will apply to you. And I'll just, like I said, I'm just going to show you my cameras. I'll take some questions over here from time to time. I'll try to slow it down. 
All right, we got uh, Greg Summers checking in from Alabama. All right, G. Newton was hanging out up the scorebirds. All right, cool, man. Hope you had a good time there. John Allen wants to know, are we up on Pornhub yet? <laughs> no, a lot, of, a lot of folks ask me that too, you know? Go to uh, Pornhub or YouPorn, what, whatever them channels are. I, that's, uh, we're not there yet. That's not my cup of tea right now. But like I said, I got 20 years and then I'm a dead man. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing the bat at every damn pitch, every ball that comes past me. I'm swinging the bat. I ain't going down looking at that ball go past me. I don't care. So I don't know, man. Right now I'm on YouTube. And that's, that's where we're at. Okay, so Jenna's checking in saying a lot of folks use iPhones with lenses. Yes, they do, and you can. And, and, and we'll talk about the iPhone, but I'm gonna save that for the last thing I do talk about. All right, so. Make sure nothing blowing off the balcony here. Okay, I started out like about six, seven years ago, I bought a new camera. You know, it was new back then. And it's a Sony camcorder. You know, the you know flip open style camcorder. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. And then about a year or so ago, I convinced myself that I needed to upgrade my camera gear. And I did some research and I like to travel light. I like to have portability. And I stumbled on to the Sony RX100, and at the time they had just come out with a Mark V. They're already up to a Mark VI. And if you want to look at what I'm talking about in another tab, the link's down in the description. It says uh, Sony Cybershot RX100. And folks, it's a, it's a pocket camera. It's a point and shoot pocket camera. Let me take it out of the case here. And here we have it. All right, that is the Sony RX100 Mark V. And all of these RX100s are basically the same, they look the same. I mean, the only, only way you really can tell them apart, it says it right there, it says RX100 uh, 5. Now folks, this, this little jewel right here, when it came out with all the accessories and everything that it that I got with it, and I'll I'll talk about that. This checked in around 1,200 bucks U.S. Somewhere around there, 1,200 bucks. But this is basically like I don't want to, you know. There, I can't say it's the equivalent of a DSLR. But folks, this this is a a powerful little pocket camera, point and shoot. Okay, the screen folds out. And you can also flip it up. So technically, it's good for for uh, blogging, you know, for recording yourself. And it's got a good zoom. So I don't even know where to begin. This is a love-hate relationship with this little camera right here. So I sunk 1,200 into it and started using it. I have used it for a few videos and. I'm gonna tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. What I like about it is the portability. This goes in my pocket. This thing takes excellent still photos. It's, uh, that's, okay, look, that's the plus side. It takes great still photos. But I didn't really buy it, you know, for still photos. I bought it for video. Folks, this thing will shoot 4K, but it only goes up to 30 frames per second. Okay? When you shoot 4K on this camera, which I really didn't realize this when I bought it. You know, you learn you learn as you go. It will only shoot 4K for 5 minutes. 5 minutes of 4K footage and the thing will automatically stop recording. Now if you hit record again, 
it'll record for maybe a few more minutes and this thing will get so hot that it does a thermal shutdown now the problem with the thermal shutdown okay say i i squeak out and, and it depends on how hot it is you know if it's a hot day and i squeak out six seven minutes shooting 4k on this little guy and it goes into thermal shutdown it's not coming back on until it cools off so if something goes down or whatever you can't pick it up and turn it back on it's a thermal shutdown it's too hot it gets overheated and that's the big complaint about the rx100 you want to shoot 4k you can do it but you're not going to get five or six minutes and then this thing turns into a twelve hundred dollar paperweight and it's going to cool down for like 10 15 minutes before it will come back online that's not practical when you're shooting hour hour and a half long videos like you guys know that uh that i shoot here so hold on let me go over to the uh comments right here i, I want to try to keep up with the comments All right, Richard Daniel, Davy Jones, uh, Anonymous X coming up with some uh, colorful comments there. Aaron Taylor. Yeah, I got a little bit of a hangover going on, my friends, but I'm, I'm working on it with the coffee. And the only way to deal with a hangover is to just get up and take it head on. Now, Pablo recommends you bite the dog and just get drunk again. That is another good option. But I said, you know what? It's a beautiful day. I'm going to be productive. Okay, National Guardsman, RX100 is great. Um, let's see. Got a Canon G7X collecting dust. Okay, uh, uh, Philippines. Let's see, with JLB. Same with your Sony. Five minutes is all you get okay now talking about this overheating issue oh thank you very much helen of troy folks the beautiful helen of troy just brought me out a uh, jack and coke forget that coffee let's get back down to business thank you baby okay so while we're talking about this 4k issue um what is is depressing about it and is disappointing is that I paid 1200 bucks for this guy it shoots 4k at 30 frames it won't do 60 frames guess what my iPhone shoots 4k 60 frames per second and you can go over to one of my old videos I did a test I set the iPhone on a tripod at the little beach bar I was at I shot 4K 60 frames, and I can't remember how long it, it, it went. I think it went two hours, two and a half hours on an iPhone 8 Plus shooting 4K 60 frames. It got a little bit hot, but it never thermal shut down. It, 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 it recorded in 4K until the battery died. That's the only thing that stopped it from recording was the battery went dead. So how can an iPhone record 4K 60 frames and my $1,200 point and shoot can only do five minutes? Okay, now we, we can argue the difference in quality. Obviously there's a difference in quality, but five minutes ain't gonna get it. If it, if it would do 25 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes, if it would do 20 minutes, then I would be shooting 4K on this on this little RX100 right here. It won't do it. The other thing that's wrong with it is that when you shoot 4K, you only get the standard uh, image stabilization. So if I shoot 4K and walk around with this guy, it is shaky, shaky, shaky footage. So basically what you do with this to make this work is you have to swap back over to 1080p. You know, I shoot 1080, 60 frames, whatever. Then go over to the optical or the, the image stabilization setting and put it on intelligent active. Then you have a video camera. All right, but I'm, I'm shooting great quality 1080 and the, the, the stabilization is pretty good once you hit that setting but it won't do 4K and I paid 1200 bucks for it. 
Does it take outstanding still photographs? Absolutely. If I put this guy on a tripod, oh, and here's the other great thing about it. The, the good thing, this thing is great at night. All right, it's, it's great if, uh, if I'm shooting, if I wanna shoot a scene at night, if I put this thing on a tripod and just let it go. At nighttime, the RX100 is my go-to camera. The iPhone is not great at night. The iPhone is great during the day, great shooting 4K, but at night, the iPhone just loses it. I mean, you got these little, little uh, what do they call them? Like little stars, little green things all over the screen. It's, it's, it's not a great camera at night at all. Uh, so anyhow, that's my RX100. I, I got about 1200 bucks invested in that guy. And it is my least used camera out of all my gear, okay? I, I only really use it, I, I did use it a couple times in my, my video when we were at the hospital because I was just forcing myself to give it another, another go. But it's my least used camera. The, the other reason <clears throat> that, and I'm gonna talk about this with my, my next camera I'm gonna show you. Okay, the power button is recessed right there. So if I'm trying to get this thing running quick, I'm fumbling around, I have to physically look at it. It's just not prominent enough to get it by feel. Get that thing on. And then this button right here is the, is the record button. It's, it's not really ergonomically user friendly. Now I realize it's because it's in a small package. But this, this one here, most expensive camera I own and the least used. Great still photography. Great if I put it on a tripod at night and let it go. The, uh, the microphone is okay, but here's the chief complaint that every, uh, every vlogger complains about this camera. There is no external microphone spot. You can't plug an external mic into this guy. That right there is what really kills this camera. Okay, is this the best camera for vloggers, for YouTubers? No, it is not the best camera. Is it a good camera? It, can it always be in your pocket or your purse? Yes. And the fact that you have a camera with you is better than the greatest camera in the world sitting back at your house, right? So there are some pros and cons of this guy. But if I had to recommend this camera to anybody, if you're a millionaire, go buy a couple. All right, throw one in the in the console of your car, or whatever. You always got a camera right there for you, right? Put one in your wife's purse. If you're a millionaire, get the RX100. Another good thing about this is they make those underwater housings, so you can take a badass camera underwater, get good underwater photography. How often do I do that? Pretty much never. So, do I recommend? the RX100 if you're starting a YouTube channel and you're the average guy. No, I do not. Do not go out and spend a thousand dollars, a grand, whatever they're going for now on an RX100. I can't recommend it. Okay? You can't shoot 4K more than five minutes. You can't plug in an external microphone. Okay? It's shaky unless you swap back to 1080p. So no, I don't recommend this for the average person like me starting out on a budget slash broke, however you want to refer to, you know, when you ain't got enough money, whatever. If you don't got a million bucks and, and you just don't care, I don't recommend this camera for anyone starting out on their YouTube channel. Does that mean I'm not a fan of Sony? No, because the next camera I'm going to show you is my favorite camera, and it is a Sony camera. Um, but that's the RX100 right there. The battery life on that guy, if you do go with that camera, it don't last very long, so I recommend you get two extra batteries, okay? Uh, and, you know, I don't use this thing enough. If, if it was my primary camera, I'd probably have 10 batteries. Uh, but if you're gonna buy that, you, uh, you need to get some extra batteries with the RX100. Okay, so let's, let me go back up here 
check some comments. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, JLB. Yeah, it's got it's got some it's got some problems as far as using it for YouTube, your primary camera for YouTube. Okay, DJ, DJI Pocket is the best for picture quality. Only downfall, it's not waterproof. I've heard of that. I've never had my hands on one. Okay, the, the Sony FDR X3000 has an external mic output. Uh, input, whatever, yeah. And I think, folks, as we talk about this, even though you're starting out, you've got to have a camera with... A microphone input okay you got to be able to use either a lapel mic like I'm using right now and I'm going to show you that in a minute or a wireless mic or some type of microphone and that Sony right there it just can't do it so whatever camera you buy make sure if you're going to spend more than if you're going to spend any amount of money on a new camera and you're going to start a YouTube channel I recommend that you make sure it has a external microphone uh, input plug whatever you want to call it all right I bought a hero 4 GoPro last year and I still haven't taken it out of the box down and out in paradise Panama you know I bought the GoPro as well years ago I bought every accessory that it had and I really wanted to love that camera and I used it a handful of times I spent most of the time with that GoPro trying to figure out, is it working? Is it recording? Right. That thing is a toy. The GoPro is a toy that, uh, great marketing. You know, you see, uh, you know, people mounting on surfboards and whatever, and you're like, oh, I got to have one of those. And then you realize, shit, I don't surf. I don't snowboard. I don't need to mount this thing on the side of an aircraft wing. I think if you're a diver, you're a you're a snowboarder uh you're a skydiver okay yeah get the gopro right and, and make sure you know how to use the damn thing but for me i never used it and i just ended up giving it to my kid because he likes to snowboard in exchange for some snowboard footage that i never got still owe me that footage man um so i don't recommend the gopro either and the quality and the picture quality on the new ones is a lot better than the one I had years ago, obviously. But I, I, don't, I don't recommend the GoPro unless you're in some type of extreme sport or, you know, say you're, uh, you're a diving instructor. Well, obviously, get a GoPro. If you're a skydive instructor, get you a GoPro. If you're the average YouTube dude, GoPro is not for you. Okay, you're trying to start a YouTube channel? No, I don't recommend a, a GoPro. Okay, uh, somebody's recommended HRC, a, a mirrorless alpha. Jenna says a lot of people use Fuji uh, cameras. Junior, how you doing? Ronnie61. Okay, Robert says make sure your camera has a glass lens, not pl plastic. Duke Lopez, everybody's doing good, my friend. How you doing? Okay, Jenna's using a 10-year-old Olympus Stylus 1030, great for snorkeling. All right, exactly. So, you know, if you snorkel twice a year, you don't need a GoPro. If you snorkel every day, well, then maybe it's worth it. <laughs> All right, so down and out, bought the GoPro for fishing videos, but hasn't bought the boat yet. Mark Marlin checking in. Yeah, man, I should be around. I, I sh I'm here, man. So uh, hit me up when you get in town. Okay, so I just we, we just went over to RX100. $1,200 little little pocket, you know, little pocket slash purse powerhouse, but with some definite drawbacks to the guy trying to start a YouTube channel. Uh, and if you don't know shit about photography, you really don't, you can't unlock, so to speak, the true capabilities of this camera. And I'm not a photographer. So this thing has got so many settings that you can tweak just like a big, huge camera, but I'm, I'm, I don't know that. Uh, $1,200 um, mis, misdirected 
misguided, what's the word? Uh, I should have invested in a different type of camera. But I bought the RX100 and it's still in service. I can still use it, it takes great still photos. But I needed something for YouTube. But you, you live and learn. Okay, DJI Pocket takes amazing pics and it's only 350 bucks. It has its own stabilization that is amazing. Okay, folks, if you're not familiar with stabilization, and I'm not real, I'm not a real technical guy, okay, as far when it comes to this stuff. But when you're walking, okay, there, there's, I guess, different types of, of stabilization. And one is called optical image stabilization, where it's like the, the lens, somehow it's like, it, it's, it's the hardware that's doing it. So you have the camera itself that's trying to stabilize the footage, sort of like a gimbal, but it's like built in. It's optical image stabilization. And then you have the software that does it. And then, you know, when you combine those two, whatever, it's, it's the, it takes out a lot of the shake, especially when you're walking. So um, everybody's told me, hey man, go buy a gimbal. A gimbal's, I don't have a gimbal to show you. And I've never, never used a gimbal before. I've never had one, but I, I was gonna buy one in the mall until we figured out that my iPhone 8 Plus was too heavy for that particular gimbal. And I, I gotta get a bigger gimbal with a uh, uh, little bit more ass to it. But the one I was looking at in this particular shop, it just, uh, it wouldn't support my iPhone 8 Plus. It's too heavy. Okay, so anyhow, just a, just a quick point about that. Yeah, you, whatever you buy, you gotta make sure that thing has good optical image stabilization because you're gonna be walking, you're gonna be moving, you're gonna be on motorcycles, boats, whatever, you know, if you're, if you're doing travel type stuff. And from what I understand on this RX100, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is no optical image stabilization on this guy. So that's why if you're shooting 4K, it's shaky. You gotta go to 1080 and then click that intelligent, active, whatever, so the software helps stabilize it. Okay, London Bobby says an iPhone 10 with an Osmo stabilizer. Okay, that's that's probably a good setup. iPhone on a, on a gimbal or stabilizer or whatever, you're gonna get pretty steady footage because my iPhone does pretty damn well. And most of the time I'm just holding it with my hand. Sometimes when I'm walking fast, I know, or I'm not paying attention, but I can pretty much hold that iPhone pretty steady and it has uh, optical image stabilization in there. Okay, now, all right, let's move to the next camera. Again, this is a six, seven year old camera, but this is my favorite camera to shoot video on and folks here we go it's just an old Sony camcorder and it's got this lens hood it actually came with that and what this thing right here does it kind of like blocks the the, the sun glare you know keeps the glare off the lens but folks this is just a this is just the old handy cam and the model is a HDR CX580. And it's got the, the fold out. It's got the fold out screen. It swivels so I can sit here and see what's going on. And this thing, you know, seven, eight years ago was probably, I don't know, seven, eight hundred bucks, six hundred. I don't, I don't remember what I paid for it, maybe six hundred. But I'm gonna tell you why I like this guy. Okay, number one, the, 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 the stabilization on this dude is on time. I mean, as long as you can halfway hold this thing steady, it's got great optical image stabilization. Okay, the microphone is awesome. The audio on this guy is on time. The audio on the iPhone, unless you plug in a lapel mic like I'm using now, it sucks. Unless I'm right here, like talking to that iPhone, the audio is always low. It's always horrible. I've corrected the problem with this lapel mic, but on this camera here, that microphone 
is awesome. It is good to go. All right, this thing has a, uh, what is it, 20 times zoom? It's got 20 times zoom on this thing. I was sitting over here filming the uh, Ospreys flying in and out of Clark Field over here. I guess the Marines are in town. I'm zooming in on these aircraft, folks. Something I cannot do with uh, the iPhone or, or with that RX100. This thing is a champion. The battery life on these guys, I mean, lasts forever. I only have two batteries with this and I have never run them down. I mean, this thing will record all day long. It does not shoot 4K. This is back in, from back in the day before I think 4K was even available, you know, at a, at a reasonable price. So, let me show you a big feature here. Okay, right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there is an external microphone plug where you can plug in an external mic and there's a headphone jack. So when you plug in that external mic, you put the headphones on and you can hear what the microphone is hearing. You know the audio is good. So if you got a, a person behind the camera, they can be listening and be like, hold up, the audio is not good. We've got to fix it. Now, if I'm using my wireless microphones by myself, I don't know if it's good or not. The other day I ruined 30 minutes of video because uh, I was getting some interference. Okay, the ease of use of this guy. Okay, if I'm out on the street and I want somebody to hold a camera for me, which I don't recommend, and most of the time it's really dangerous to hand your camera to anybody, right? But say the tricycle driver is taking me somewhere. Well, the tricycle driver is not going to drive off with my damn camera. I know all of them. So if I hand it to the tricycle driver and say, hey, man, can you hold this camera on me for a minute? A lot of times if I hand them the iPhone, they end up accidentally pushing the button and don't get the footage or some shit like that. But this guy here, I can hand this to anybody, and they can hold the camera. And even if they're shaky, that opt optical image stabilization still makes it pretty good. Now... Let me show you how fast I can get this thing recording. All right, you got to watch this. Boom, open the screen. Boom, push the button, we're recording. Now we're not, okay? That in itself is worth a million dollars. And oh, by the way, that lens cap right there opens, open sesame. Okay, it opens and closes. So I'm not constantly dealing with a fucking lens cap like I am if, you know, I used to have a, a DSLR. You're constantly taking that lens cap on and off trying to protect the lens. This guy here is simplicity. Simplicity, two steps to get this into operation. Open it up, hit the big fat button right there. We're, we're rolling, okay? Now, on top, it has this shoe now it's not a hot shoe. There's not there's not uh, power going to it, which some have power. This is not. And what I do, folks, show you this next next piece of equipment. This is a Sennheiser wireless microphone system. Now basically, what I'm holding in my hand right now is the transmitter. Okay, that's the transmitter. So the transmitter gets mounted right here on top of the camera and you plug that into the microphone jack and then on my body, on my person I'm sorry, this, this is the I'm sorry, this is the receiver this is the transmitter and that goes on my belt and there's a microphone so now you can walk around and this thing works it's pretty good distance I can walk away from the camera and I've had these for years and I should have been using them for years but um, I just got lazy. That wireless microphone system, it's about seven, eight years old as well. They got some, uh, this is the G3, the EW100 G3. I think they got the G4 now. Links down in the description. These things are about a $1,000 setup. Sennheiser is no joke. Best, best audio you can buy. If you're starting a YouTube channel, probably you don't want to invest a thousand dollars in some microphones, but you want to invest some money in some external microphones. And I'm going to show you the, uh, the, the best option for you. But for some reason, I bought these years ago and now I'm actually starting to use them and they work great. 
Sennheiser wireless mics. And you can mount it right there on top of this little guy and boom. Okay, so this is my favorite go-to camera. And folks, this thing right here, the link's down in the description. But this grip right here basically came with a cell phone mount from a company called, shit, drop this off the balcony, called ReadyCam. And this is a clip right here. It's metal, it's good quality, and it's what the iPhone is sitting in right now on this tripod. So if I, I take this and I put it on the top of that, it's a grip for the iPhone. But the way I've mounted this, my best system, I've got this grip on the Sony, and I've got this tripod here, it's called the Pixie, Pixie Mini, I think, by uh, Manfrotto. This thing is great because you just push the button and you get whatever angle, stop it. So this is my go-to camera now. I can throw this around my neck, so I don't drop the damn thing. I'm going everywhere. Once I get to where I'm going, all I do is just pop the tripod out and boom, we're in business. This is my favorite camera, but it only shoots 1080, 60 frames because it's, it's, a, it's an old model. But there you go. I love this guy. If I were to upgrade to a 4K camera <laughs> today, I would want something exactly like this, and I don't know if they make it. I've looked at the Sony, uh, what's that, the AX53, whatever. It's a lot bulkier than this, but folks, this thing is so small. I'll just give you a size comparison. Okay, shit, next to the RX100. All right, really, this thing is not much bigger than the RX100. So when I do go to upgrade, at some point I will, to 4K, I'm looking for the exact same features, the exact same size of this guy here. I just want it in 4K and I want it to shoot 60 frames. Got the shoe to mount it, external microphone jack, headphone jack. That is my favorite, favorite little camera right there. Okay, so let me take a drink and look at some comments. I was thinking poor Dan in the house. Thank you, my friend. How you doing? Okay, it, it, how did I say that? Ed, editage mics, never heard of them, my friend. But they're, they're good mics. Jay Hayes, Blue Shark, got Jazz. Okay, use a Panasonic HC camcorder and a shotgun mic from by Audio Technica. Great optical image stabilization and killer audio. Folks, I think those are the two key things. Now, I'm not a film professional. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm not one of these big, uh, big time photographers, videographers. I don't have 10 million subscribers to this channel yet. But I think the two biggest things are just what he said, what, what my friend here just said. Optical image stabilization and killer audio. Nobody wants to see the shaky camera. They don't want to see that shit. You hit me on that all the time. I know. I got it. Nobody wants to see shaky video and they don't want shitty audio. I mean, you can have everything else. You can be low light, it can be a horrible angle, whatever. But as long as the camera is stable and the audio is good, people will keep watching the video. But shaky video and shitty audio, they're not gonna watch it. All right, Donovan, Jess Man, Singapore, Dan. My, my vicarious life. Okay, it uses a, a cheap GoPro knockoff. Now, I've seen several knockoffs of the GoPros. A lot of people using them. I can't vouch for, their, for any of the quality. Like one guy had a Sony. What's that kind of long, it was like a tube looking Sony? I can't remember. Okay, yeah, audio and stabilization. That, to me, that's the two keys right there. All right, so what I just showed you, 
this ready cam mount right here you just slide your cell phone in there right right like that and this is what the I, I'm, I'm on an iPhone 8 plus right now and it's sitting on a tripod and you just clamp down like that and folks this is metal that that's metal right there it is it's not going anywhere once you clamp that down and horse coming through horse and buggy once you clamp that down it's not going nowhere and, it, and you can mount it on a tripod or on that grip that I just showed you the link is down in the description so if you were gonna start a YouTube channel you have to have a ready cam mount this is a necessity oh by the way if you don't have your tripod with you that thing will sit flat right there okay and you can turn it around a lot of my videos they're not even on a tripod they're just sitting in this ready cam mount okay this is a necessity so write that on your list affiliate links down in the description you need that and what I recommend the link that I put down there it comes with this this handle I don't know if you see from the red to the red right there it's this rubber grip and that grip is wonderful and it actually has a lanyard on it that screws in the bottom so you put that lanyard you got that grip you know great piece of gear I lost the lanyard one night I got drunk and I was playing with it and I lost it but that link has the uh, the combo it's the, the cell phone clip the mount and that handle You've gotta have it folks I recommend those okay now talked about my two cameras those are the two big cameras hey good night Jenna I know it's getting late over there have a good night thanks for uh, tuning in yeah I'm in the Philippines right now folks beautiful day here beautiful weather oh my goodness now oh, Brandon that's I was talking about that last night man Sony FDR 3004k Let's see. Yeah, last night I last night I had to get I had to tear it up last night, my friends, but yeah, today we're talking about cameras. The title of this video I think is what is it? The best best camera for YouTube? Okay. Alright. <laughs> if you're starting a YouTube channel. I'm going to show you the best camera. Hold on a second. If you're starting a YouTube channel, I'm going to show you the best camera for YouTube. Okay? Are you ready? Okay. Can you see it? I hope you can see that. Not me, the mirror. Look in the mirror. You want to know the best camera for YouTube? For starting a YouTube channel for running a YouTube channel okay the best camera for YouTube is the damn cell phone in your pocket I'm an iPhone guy I personally recommend iPhone that's what I go with I'm in the simplicity and iPhones never let me down okay the best camera for YouTube folks and this shouldn't be a, a, a shock, but it's right there. It's the cell phone you've got in your pocket. And if you were going to buy one, I would buy the iPhone. But check it out. You know why that's the best camera for YouTube right there? Folks, I'm live streaming from the, from the iPhone. Okay? I can shoot 4K, 60 frames per second video on the iPhone I can take that video I can edit that video on the iPhone in iMovie and I can upload that shit to YouTube from the iPhone my video never has to leave the iPhone you don't need a computer you don't need an iPad you can run a YouTube channel on your cell phone okay you download the YouTube app 
and you download what's called YouTube Studio, where you can kind of do the back end, you know, a little bit more of the back end, see the analytics. You don't need a computer. You don't need a camera. You can run a YouTube channel right there from that iPhone, like I'm doing right now, okay? Sitting on this Manfrotto, uh, well, shit, you can't see, there we go. Sitting on this Manfrotto uh, tripod right here. It's a travel tripod, good sturdy. Uh, the link for that guy is down in the description too. So there we go. Title of the video, best camera for YouTube is an iPhone. You get anything over an iPhone, I, I wouldn't go anything lower than an iPhone 6S. Okay, you get a, what, a 6S Plus or above, you can run a YouTube channel with great video and the audio. And look, folks, there's Helen of Troy over there. Oh, my goodness. You look beautiful, baby. Okay, so now back to the camera. Now, look, I told you that it's not great for the iPhone itself is not great for nighttime shooting and the audio is not good. But here's the way you correct the problem. Okay, can you see this plugged in right there? And basically, what I've got is this little lapel mic. Check, check, check. Clip right down here. Clip to my vest. That solves the audio problem. Okay, this particular lab mic, and I do recommend this. If you're starting a YouTube channel, you need this iRig Mic Lav for your iPhone. It's plug and play. All you do is plug it in, clip this little microphone, you know, down on your shirt, what have you. And folks, it's got a nice long cord. I could be leaning up against this thing over here and still talking. So the, the affiliate link down there, it's in the description but I highly recommend this product here. I should have had this product a year ago and I can't remember exactly how much it is. I think this is like a $60, $60 product. So you gotta have this, you gotta have this ready cam and you gotta have that uh, Manfrotto Pixie Mini um, little tripod there. And if you want a better tripod, I recommend this, this Manfrotto uh, What's it called? Compact light. It's, the link's down in the description. So, uh, baby, I'm, I'm trying to do a YouTube live stream, and you're, you're mopping the floor. That's wonderful, but um, yeah, just wait. You can do this over here later, unless you want. I mean, I'm sure people would love to see you mop the floor. All right, so, so there we go. I do recommend this right here. All right, let's see. Go to the comments, Izzy Thomas. Hey, thank you very much, Izzy. Okay, YouTube Studio. No, you. I, I, I edit the video in iMovie. It's Apple's program. Folks, iMovie, free program with Apple. Okay, I have Final Cut Pro, which is a, a, a professional program, it's expensive, but I only recently started messing around with Final Cut Pro because it's, uh, it's more complicated. iMovie is simple. So you download the iMovie app on the phone, you can do all your editing there. It's too easy. The YouTube Studio app allows you to manage the YouTube channel on the back end. But I'm telling you, you can run your entire YouTube channel on your phone. And if you're starting out, that's the way I recommend you do it. You don't have to buy anything extra. And then you can mess around with it and see if you like it. If you don't, and if you, you want to get more serious, then start investing some more money. But that's the purpose of the video. Best camera for YouTube is the cell phone in your pocket, quite simply. Um, I recommend an iPhone, but it's whatever phone you got in your pocket. It'll work, okay? This is my favorite camera. I love it for the simplicity and the features. But you know what I can't do? I can't live stream on this guy. I can't whip this guy out. If it's the only camera I have, I can't whip this out and fire up a live stream. Can't do it. 
RX100, same way. I can't pull it out, fire up a live stream. I can't edit video on either one of these cameras. Or, and I don't know, maybe you can upload it, but you know, you want to do some editing first. You can't do that. You can do all of that on your cell phone. Guess what else I can't do? I can't respond to comments on these other two cameras. I can do that on my cell phone, right? So the best camera for YouTube, my friends, is the cell phone in your pocket. If you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, start there. I wouldn't invest in anything else other than what I just showed you. Um, I, would, I would invest in, in this lapel mic, definitely. I would get this to hold it and one of those little tripods. And you're looking at an investment of what about 100, 100 bucks, 125 bucks? Let's say less than 150. Take your cell phone, take 150 bucks and buy those little pieces of equipment and boom, you're off to the races running a YouTube channel. Okay, now I just showed you a product I recommend. I'm gonna show you a product I do not recommend. This iRig mic field, it basically you know plugs into the end of the phone. Boom, my vicarious life. All I saw was blue flash across my screen. My goodness, thank you very much, my friend. Yeah. Where you at in the world, my friend? You over here in the Philippines? Okay, ham hey, killer. Does, does my channel generate enough income to justify the cost of all this? Okay, cool. Uh, Michigan okay that's that's like a loaded question loaded question folks here, here's the thing my dad has a saying and he always has I mean he's got a lot of sayings but he's always had this saying he basically said either get in business or get out of business if you're anywhere in between those two parameters, according to him, you're not gonna make it. Either get in business or get the hell out of business, right? So the, the equipment that I have invested in right now is, you know, taking this thing to the next level. Do you have to have wireless microphones? No, you don't. You can, you can run your whole channel with, with this little mic right here, this, this $60 piece of equipment. But if you want to get different shots, you want to set the camera over here on a tripod and walk away from it and go over here and talk to this person, okay, well, you don't have that capability uh, with this setup. You got to either get wireless mics or get a, uh, you know, a different um, recording device, what they call them, zooms, whatever they are. Boom, intrepid four, five, six. Thank you very much, my friend. Man, I got blue headed north. I got green headed north. Wow. Thank you very much, my friend. Where you at, intrepid? Where you at in the world? Okay, so your your nephew want to know the best camera. So he he's hunting hog and coyote long distance. Now see that's that's a different that's a different niche because he's gonna need some zoom capability and probably some nighttime capability as well. Um, yeah, um, he's he's gonna have to he's gonna have to look at some different cameras because with this big camera I got, it's got that big you know it's got a pretty good zoom and it may work for hunting, but. The hunting videos that I've seen where, you know, people been hunting at night with, you know, hunting hogs in Texas, wherever, you know, they're, they're, they're rocking some, uh, some, some better camera gear to, to get because of the distance and because of low light conditions. I don't think an iPhone is going to work for that. So he's going to have to get, he's going to have to get a real camera to get those shots in. Okay. Uh, drone footage. Yeah, the bigger channels are using drone footage. Folks, here's the thing about drones. Like, it's a beautiful view, right? Oh my God, this is beautiful. You know, if I flew a drone over here, 
you'd be like, oh, that's beautiful footage. And then after about four seconds, if I'm not talking, you're gonna lose interest in that drone footage. So I think it's, it's very beautiful uh, footage. Uh, I think the drone is probably a fun thing to you know just play with and fly around, but I can't justify spending you know I don't know how much they cost what five hundred thousand bucks. I can't justify the cost right now for the amount of footage that I would get. Uh, so that's not something uh, right now that fits you know fits into what I got going on. I needed to get the audio corrected first. And so I, you know, I think I've got that uh, corrected here. My vicarious life says, hey, drones are boring. Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna watch drone footage for more than a few seconds unless there's a narration. You know, if somebody's talking and narrating, they may hold your attention, but after a few seconds of looking at that beautiful blue water, um, that's it. So, you, you know, so for me on a drone right now, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's not, it's not worth the investment. Yeah, I'm, dr I'm drinking Jack and, I'm drinking Jack and Coke right now. Try to try to deal with this headache, with this hangover. Ernie, didn't mean to scare you, my friend. Tyler Weston, how you doing? Yeah, max, max attention on a drone shot, probably 10 seconds, yeah. Next time you're watching the drone footage, just sit there and, and, and just think about it. How long could I watch this before I would uh, click off of it? Yeah, and at some, at some point, like I said, at some point I might get a drone, but uh, just to play with. Hell, I'd love to fly the thing around the, around in the house, you know? Hell, when I was growing up, every kid wanted a remote control airplane, right? Or a remote control helicopter. I don't know how we call them drones now. You know, back, back then there were remote control planes, remote control helicopters, now we call them drones. They're good for intros and endings. Yeah, that probably, that probably would, yeah, I agree on that one. Yeah, the, the music that most people put on the drone footage. So Benny the Mac is out checking his uh, crab traps down in Australia, catching crabs down there. Yeah, radio control, right? Yeah, we used to call them radio control, right? Remote control, radio control. Now they're called drones. That goes right up there and I missed it. You know, at some point the uh, the number sign became a hashtag. I missed it when it happened. I mean, I know what a hashtag is now, but how do we go from the number sign to hashtag? I don't know. Jay Hayes bought two already and crashed both of them on the maiden flight. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's the other thing about it. You find that $500 drone over some water and it craps out, you just lost 500 bucks. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not into that. Uh, Mark Marlin said Benny caught an eel. So he's out fishing. Okay, Mark Raymond says uh, too much restriction flying drones here in Cali. You can't fly above 400 feet and within five mile radius to any airport. All right, hey man, that's a good point. Now, you know, over in Thailand, if you buy, buy a drone that's bigger than basically a toy, I mean, they, they have regulations on the sizes or whatever, I don't know how they regulate it, uh, but, but it's basically anything over like this big, what, when I was looking in the shop, you have to have a permit. You have to have a license for that drone in the country of Thailand. And it's not cheap. It was like, what was it? It was like 400 bucks a year, and I may be off, whatever. But we were looking at drones, me and Doc Wayne, and the guy said, yeah, you gotta have a license for that. We can help you get it, but it, you know, it's 400 bucks. And we're like, hell no. The damn license was, you know, close to the price of the drone. You know, and the police catch you flying that thing, you don't have a license, you got trouble. 
So it's like I bring that up because everywhere you go these days, it seems like every country, every state, every jurisdiction, they got different regulations on drones. And if I start rolling around with a drone, for me, the way I travel, it's just a liability. It's, a, it's just a liability. I don't, I don't want any problems with the police, you know. Benny needs a, a sexy first mate to hold his camera in his little boat. <laughs> hey, Benny, you got to get a chick to uh, ride and check the crab traps with you, man. <laughs> Roland says drones make for great target practice. Yeah, that drone would have been cool to fly out there. Uh, you know, like that desert safari I was on, that would have been cool. Fly over them dunes and even follow, like, you know, we were, we were dune bashing in the Toyota Land Cruisers, right? If you could follow one of those things with a drone, now that would be badass footage. Just follow that thing for 30 minutes, put some rock and roll to it, and the people would watch that. that. That would be interesting as hell. Donnie Porter, here now. Airport's right behind me. You're basically uh, looking over over my shoulder right here is the is the airfield, and then right like right there is a little training airfield where they fly Cessnas in and out all day. So I just sit here on this balcony. I watch the planes come in. I watch the little Cessnas take off. It's just beautiful. You got the volcano over here, Mount. Uh, how do you say it? A, a, a riot, Ariat, a riot. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm looking at a volcano. I'm looking at hills, I'm watching airplanes take off, it's, it's beautiful. No, this ain't a Rolex, my friends, this is a Timex. It's Timex, hasn't, wa hasn't worked in years. I set it for right at five minutes before five o'clock, it never changes. Every time I look at this watch, you know, five o'clock used to be quitting time, right? It was, it was beer time, so when I look at that watch, it reminds me it's time for a beer. Robert B. used to work on F4s at that airport. What year, man? You were here back in the good old days. But yeah, yesterday, they're flying uh, Ospreys out of there. I think they're parked over there. They got some Ospreys hanging out over there the past few days. Hey, Benny, you got Benny the Mac checking in, my friends. So what, what was in the crab trap, Benny? You got a, somebody said you caught an eel? Did you, you get any crabs out of it or what? Yeah, big money Benny up in the house. Yeah, folks, and you know, like I said, I'm right. I'm right here in Angeli City. That's Clark Airfield, Air Base, Clark Field, whatever you call it these days. International Airport. If you're flying, if you're coming to Angeli City, folks, it's a no-brainer. But if you can get a flight into Clark, and I'm not talking about just the fact that you're here, it's the fact that you don't got to deal with that bullshit at Manila Airport. If you can fly anywhere in and out of this airport versus Manila, even if I was going to Manila, if I was going to Manila, I would rather fly into Clark and take a damn bus down to Manila than deal with Manila Airport. What, what you got, Benny? You gonna, you gonna grill that eel? Hey Joshua, thanks for reading my book, my friend. Which, which, well, which book? Are you reading the first one or the second one? But thanks for uh, reading my book. If you don't mind, do me a review on Amazon. Give me an honest review. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I was I wasn't here during the time, folks. But you know, a little history. Mount Pinatubo over this way. You know, blue, one of the biggest uh, volcanic eruptions in what, 100, 200 years? And, you know, basically destroyed this whole place. 
and so we handed the the keys to the to the base back over but like i said you got ospreys flying uh, they're i don't think they're they're not stationed here but they're here i see ospreys flying around all day yesterday hell yeah man got five keeper crabs Got a moray eel. Cool, Benny. Benny, man, everybody said you need a lady. You need a good looking lady on that boat, man. Going out there by yourself. You need a Filipina on the on the front of that boat. Yeah, I just realized I'm not wearing my hat. I was rocking that hat last night though. That's a badass hat. All right, so Dark Star says those crabs are 20 bucks a piece that Big Money Benny pulled out of them for that crab trap. Yeah, Viking Mode, I eat over here at this deli next door. That roast beef is on time. I like the roast beef and the uh, turkey, turkey and ham combo. Delicious. Now, they do have a cheesesteak on the menu, but I still prefer the cheesesteak down at Philly's. Uh, but everything at this little deli right here is, is on time. It's delicious. And they got, you know, cheesecakes and cakes and uh, all kind of little desserts in there, too, that are, that are delicious. My ladies, they love it. They love when I go down there. 89 to 91, Tony, South Dakota. Cool, man. So you, I, I think I asked you before. I think it was you. you. You were here when Pinatubo blew, right? When it went off. Oh, okay, cool, Josh. All right, so you're reading, uh, yeah, Killing Sheep. That's my first book. Then I wrote another book called The King's Chronicles, How to Escape the Wrath of American Women and Live Like a King. Cool, man, cool. Donovan got both my books. All right, cool, man. Folks, I want to say thanks to... Let me just say thanks for a minute for everybody that watches my channel, that hangs out here and, you know, comments. And, folks, I'm just, I'm just like, I'm still honored that folks watch uh, my content, my material. And I'm honored that people read the books that I have written, or they read a blog post. I'm just a simple dude. I'm no different than anybody else on here. Uh, the only difference is what? I'm talking to a camera, and you know, I didn't know anything about writing a book. I just sat down and started writing. So I, I'm no different than anybody else, but you know, I grew up poor in the backwoods in the country, and, it's very, uh, what's the word? It, it's very exciting that somebody, when somebody buys my book and they read my book, and you know, you take the time to, to take the time to read it, you take the time to, to watch one of my videos, and whether you agree with me or not, I mean, I know time is valuable. You know, time is money, especially in the West. And when folks take the time uh, to do that, Folks, I'm I'm honored. It's something I still haven't got used to, really. Because, like I said, I'm I'm just some I'm just some poor dumb redneck. Grew up on a dirt road in the backwoods of Mississippi, and so it's cool. But you know, it takes a while to get used to. And still, I'm still not used to it. So thank you very much for uh, for buying my books, for reading my books, and for hanging out with me on these videos and live streams. And I know everybody's don't agree with everything I say. That's fine. I love dissenting opinions. And you know, I got some messages this morning. Hey man, I don't I don't like you when you're drunk. Okay, I got it. Um, but there's nothing there's nothing scripted here, folks. There's nothing 
I'm not censoring anything. There's nothing scripted. I just decided to allow, um, you know, to share my life with the masses via YouTube, via writing a couple books. And I'm not going to change for anybody. What's uh? I've already I've already said it before on a previous video about the dancing chicken. I ain't no dancing chicken. What movie did that come from? Donovan Phipps, thank you very much, man. Yeah, and thanks for putting out such awesome entertainment. Folks, I think what you know you know when I first really decided and realized it was like call it the Eureka moment. Now, I'm, I'm coming up on, what do I got, 9,600 subscribers? Intrepid 4, 5, 6 with the blue headed north. I got this big blue bar across the screen here, folks. Can you see that? I got I got this iPad. Hold on a second. How am I going to get it? I got this iPad Pro right here. That way I can read. There you go. Right there, folks. All I saw was that big blue bar from Intrepid 4, 5, 6. Boom! Blue headed north. Thank you very much, my friend. So, my eureka moment, I thought I was a travel blogger. I thought I was a travel vlogger. I thought I was, I thought I was mixed in with the millions and millions and millions of other people trying to create a successful travel blog. That was my mistake. And it came to me basically about the time when I did that video called Why You Shouldn't Give a Fuck. I realized that what's the difference? Okay, say you start a YouTube channel, right? Or say you're going to Boracay and you look on YouTube at videos of Boracay. And so if you're gonna shoot a video of the beach, you walk down the beach, you walk back up the beach, you upload a video, like millions of other people. Does the beach change? Same blue water, white sand beaches, tourists everywhere, you know, water all around, whatever. So what, what's the difference? The difference is the person behind the camera, the person talking to the camera, the person narrating. That's the difference. That's the only thing that sets a travel video apart because you're just re you're showing the same shit over and over and over and over. If I do a video about Walking Street in Angeles City tonight, how does my video get set apart from the millions and millions and millions of dudes walking up and down Walking Street with a, with a camera zooming in on the chicks? It's the person narrating, the person behind it. That's the only way you set your videos apart from the, from the next guys. And I'm not saying I'm, you know, I'm better, worse, whatever. I'm just saying that's what sets it apart. Because if I walk down Walking Street and don't say nothing and come back up, you don't even know that's my video. If you just watched it, you wouldn't know that's my channel. But you know my content is mine because you hear me running my trap. You see me getting drunk. You see me being real and doing stupid shit. And that eureka moment when I was chilling in the pool over in Thailand was when I suddenly realized I am not in the travel business. I'm in the entertainment business. I'm in the entertainment business. And once I realized that, I, I said, I'm, I'm not here. What, I'm trying, what I was trying to do is produce these polished travel videos that nobody wanted to watch because it's boring. And I said, dude, don't, don't, what, what, you, what do you have to offer? Here's what you have to offer yourself. You, your personality, your life, your likes, dislikes, your, your pluses, your negatives, this is what I have to offer. Because let's go back up to what um, 
Somebody just said about the Kardashians, right? Okay, first of all, I have no idea exactly who the Kardashians are, why they're famous, why they're rich. I still don't have no clue. And maybe after this, I'll, you know, when I'm taking a fucking shit today, I'm going to Google the Kardashians and see exactly why they're famous and why people... I, I, I don't know. I, do they have a TV show? Do they have a YouTube channel? I, I don't know why these folks are famous, right? And they're just one example. And you look at people in Hollywood and you're like, why are these people famous? You know? And so I just kind of said to myself, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to make myself famous. I'm going to make myself famous. I'm goddamn 45 years old. Well, I'm 46 now. All right, so I'm 46. I'm 46 years old. I've been around the block enough times. I got enough interesting shit and stories and adventures to talk about and to relive and rehash. I'm a hell of a lot more interesting than the fucking Kardashians. I just haven't been discovered yet. And once I realize that and say, you know what, motherfucker, you're in the entertainment business. Okay, welcome to the YouTube game, but the YouTube game is just a starting point. I'm in the fucking entertainment business. I was watching a great movie last night. Me and the ladies were watching it. It was last night or maybe the night before last. Rock of Ages with uh, Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, what a great movie. God damn, I love that movie. And I love that movie with uh, Mark Wahlberg where he was a rock star in that band called, uh, what the hell is the name of that band? Anyhow, the fence walker says, just don't get too carried away and get censored. Hey man, that's a concern on YouTube. Um, and a lot of people have threatened to get me shut down because of my cursing and blah, blah, blah. All right, well folks, here's the thing. YouTube's policy about vulgar language which is just a form of communication. I'm not singling anybody out. I'm not advocating uh, anything negative or violent or anything like that. So what? I get drunk and I curse. Uh, YouTube's policy is the worst they're going to do is uh, do the uh, restricted content, you know, for adult content only. You got to be signed in to watch it. So, yeah, it is a concern uh, about being censored. On YouTube, on YouTube, uh, but my cursing with their current policies is, uh, you know, worse. They do they, they're going to restrict the content. Uh, whatever. Not every video is full of uh, drunken rants, but every now and then one's coming. It's coming your way because that's who I am. It's exactly who I am. I get drunk. I say stupid shit. You know, if you've ever been drunk. In your life, I promise you, you've said some stupid shit too. Every one of you. Now, if you've never been drunk, you've still said some stupid shit. The only difference is I'm broadcasting live. You know, you want to see, you want to see an outstanding fucking live stream? Go over to Being the Max channel and watch that brother up in the strip club. You want uh, that, it's outstanding. There's actually two segments, two videos, live in the strip club, Benny the Max channel. That's living life, my friends. Now, is he like that all the time? No, he was drunk, having a great time, and he decided to share that with you. Am I always a crazed madman like I was last night on this balcony? No. All right. When I'm drunk, absolutely. Okay. And if you've ever been drunk, you've said and done some stupid shit yourself. I promise you. So, I don't care. You know what? I opened up my life to the masses. This is who I am. And I am in the entertainment business. Yeah, there's some uh, gun ranges here in Angeles City. I saw some signs at least. I say stupid, who said that? I say stupid, stupid shit sober, ham killer. We all say stupid shit, right? We all say stupid shit. 
We all do stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be Superman off this motherfucker because it's only about eight floors. With my luck, I'd fucking live. Now, if I'm taking a header, folks, I'm going somewhere like like the Hangover Bar in Bangkok, Labua State Tower. I'm getting I'm getting enough up there. We're on the way down. I can enjoy the fucking view and make sure I ain't gonna limp away from that shit. With my luck, I went off eight floors. I'd I'd be up in the hospital with a big hospital bill, and I don't like hospital bills. Plus, it wouldn't be much of a, of, of a view on the way down. You get a big tall building, you can like look in windows on the way down. Whoop whoop whoop. No, I'm just kidding, folks. I ain't going down like that. No, I never use uh, Airbnb. Uh, Jay, this is uh, direct with a condo. And if you're coming here to Angeles and, and staying for two weeks or more, definitely check out one of these long stay places like we're in. And I'll give a plug out to a place. I just stopped by there the other day. It's called, uh, uh, what's it called? La Grande Residence. Um, it's not too far from here. It's a brand new building. They got a pool on the bottom floor, rooftop pool, uh, a bar by both pools and a little restaurant, a workout room. But that La Grande residence, a studio was like, what the hell was it, 30? I got the price list in there. But the prices were very reasonable. If you're staying here for a month, you know, get the hell out of them hotels down there on Walker Street and get you a nice studio condo and, and you'll enjoy life much more, my friends. But I did stop by just to check out that La Grande residence. It's a, it's a real cool place. There was one, one thing that I was like, I went to the rooftop to check out the pool and this guy up at the bar, they had a keg of, of I don't remember what it was, it was German beer. They got German beer on draft, two, two, two taps. And the girl showing me around, and I'm like, I said, holy shit, there's, there's German beer on draft. I said, I'm sorry, I gotta stop and have a few beers. She's like, no problem. So I sent her back down to the, to the desk, you know, and I was up there drinking beer. And I said, you know, is it a good thing for me to move here? Because I am a fiend for German beer on draft. And I'm not saying that I won't move over there just to get a change of scenery. I mean, I love it here, but I like to mess, you know, change it up. But if I go over there and all I gotta do is hit the elevator button, go to the roof, and there is German beer on draft, that might not be a good combination for me. I'd be up there drinking that beer nonstop. Okay, does Angeles City, by the hospital here, Man, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to answer that question. I, I'm not good to answer that question because I don't know if they accept Medicare, the VA, all that. I mean, you can go sit in any bar and talk to any expat here, the, the retirees, and they, they obviously know all that stuff. But I don't know. I don't know about the VA or Medicare or any of that stuff, how it works. You know, when we just had, uh, we just had our, our baby boy, we went over to AUF, Angeles University Foundation Medical Center and you know, just pay it out of pocket. But I, I get those questions asked uh, almost on a daily basis and I just don't know. I probably need to sit down at the bar and ask some folks about how it works. At least that way I can provide you with some information. Yeah, if you're, yeah, if you come for a month because, I mean, you stay in the same hotel after about a week, it gets old, it gets stale, right? But you get a nice little studio. Number one, it's cheaper. Number two, you got a kitchenette. And, you know, you have some chicks over, you can cook, have them cook for you. All right, so back to camera. Okay, Dark Star Darth says that a, a large camera and intimidates people, I think, on the street. Yeah. 
you know what? Uh, with a with a professional looking camera, there are some drawbacks to it. Carrying around a big camera, anything that looks semi professional, and I'll, I'll give you. I've told the story before. Okay, but I'll tell two stories. Okay, if you're walking around, if you're walking around with a cell phone, if you're walking around with a cell phone, and you're filming like this, you know, in uh, portrait mode, nobody gives a shit. They think you're live streaming Facebook or whatever. Nobody cares. And you can walk around with a cell phone like this all day long. Nobody cares. Even in Walking Street, nobody will even look at you twice if you're filming like this. If you turn that camera like this, cell phone camera, and go to landscape mode, all of a sudden everybody knows you're a YouTube guy. And everybody wants to shy away from even a cell phone camera when you're we're holding it, you know, for YouTube for a, a real no shit video. But everybody can walk around like this and nobody cares. So that's one aspect of, of cameras and bigger cameras, and we're gonna get to that. But while I was on the subject of cell phones, I have noticed and observed that people are very apprehensive about being on film if you're holding it like this. But if you flip it up like this, nobody gives a shit if you're videoing like this. It happened to me and Crazy Mike when we went to the hangover bar over in Thailand and Bangkok, uh, Labua at State Tower. Okay, I was filming like this, and when I got, didn't even make it to, to the door of, of the bar on the roof, Sir, I'm sorry there's no filming, there's no video. It might disturb our guests who are eating dinner. And I was live streaming, right? If I recall correctly. And I'm like, you know what, screw it. So I went down there, I started to fire it back up. Somebody else came to me and said, hey sir, I'm sorry, you can't film. Meanwhile, every swinging dick over at the bar area, at the hangover bar area, is doing this, filming. Everybody like this. Nobody had a problem with that. But because I walked in like this, I have people all over my ass. I'm sorry, there's no video. There's no video, it disturbs our guests, our, our guests that are eating dinner. And they were nice about it. But what I wanted to say was, hey, what about the fucking 30 assholes over there fucking filming like this? What are you gonna say to them? Nothing. Go like this, you get shut down. Okay, so let's talk about the difference of me walking around certain areas, you know, filming with a cell phone, or if I walk in carrying carrying this dude right here, or a DSLR. And one time over in Thailand, me and my old lady at the time, my Filipina, we went down to this winery, it's a beautiful winery. Everybody's down there taking pictures. That's why you go to this winery, it's beautiful. Check out one of my I think it's called Nine Place, Nine Things to Do in Patty of Thailand or something like that. It has nothing to do with girls. We're down at this winery, you know, there's a thousand tourists there. Everybody's taking pictures, taking videos, cell phones, whatever. I show up with a DSLR on a tripod and I got on this, uh, this uh, tan, not this vest, but a, a tan photographer looking vest. And what I was taking pictures of was my girlfriend holding the saddlebag leather bag, right? I needed those pictures. Next thing you know, I got management coming out wanting to know what I'm doing. Why are you doing a photo shoot? And I'm like, what? I'm just taking pictures of my girlfriend. And basically what it was, if you want to do a professional photo shoot, well, you got to apply and you got to pay him some money and rightfully so. So when I look around at all the tourists taking pictures, and then I kind of looked at myself and I'm like, well, shit, I do look like a professional photographer. Big old tripod, big old DSLR. I'm wearing this damn vest with a floppy hat. And she's up there all dolled up. Well, it looked like a professional shoot and they want money. And it wasn't a professional shoot, but I looked professional. And so, yeah, you walk down a street with a big ass camera. Some people are intimidated by, by that. And some people ask you not to film. In areas like Angeles City or Pattaya, or you go to an area like, well, just, just use these two areas, for example. When Typically, when you see people with big cameras like that, they're making a documentary about some human trafficking bullshit that they've made up. And so they're here, and they're not promoting the area in a positive light. So they see some jackass carrying a big 
you know, a, a, a big camera and a couple white white girls with them talking to the camera. You know they're making a documentary about, you know, about don't go to Angeles City or don't go to Patty. You know, those messages. And so, sure, nobody wants to look at, uh, nobody wants to be on camera. And they're just making these naive bullshit documentaries. And so I have been mistaken at times people think I'm making a documentary. I'm like, no, I'm not making a fucking documentary, all right? I'm not here telling people to save the whales, you know? Saving the whales from trafficking to Andalee City and all that bullshit. But yeah, so a good point, a uh, bigger camera means more attention. And if you get into certain areas, you don't want that attention because they're gonna ask you to stop filming or leave or get the hell out of here, right? And perfect example, we were in that uh, that mall down in Makati, had the big camera. And a girl asked me to stop filming. Why? Because they're selling cheap Chinese knockoff goods. And they don't want that shit on camera. You know, if the police see it, technically they come in there, raid their ass for selling knockoff goods. So that is a drawback to carrying around a big, huge, expensive camera. And another drawback, you know, some of these areas that, that I roll to, you know, a camera makes you a target. A big camera, expensive camera, makes you a target for thieves or people going to snatch it, you know, come by on a motorbike and try to snatch it from you. Okay, so National Guardsman says he's a street photographer and he just uses a Nokia cell phone because when he uses a DSLR, people tend to shy away. Yeah, I agree. Um, I definitely agree. Shayla Satisfaction, the best camera for YouTube, let me show you, is that iPhone right there that I'm broadcasting live with. The best camera for YouTube is the cell phone that you have in your pocket. Okay, if you're just starting out, just starting out a YouTube channel, and that's basically, you know, the main purpose of this long video. If you're just starting a YouTube channel, the best camera for YouTube is your cell phone. And if you'll just play back the video, a couple of accessories, a little lapel mic and a tripod, a little small tripod, that's all you need. So if you're starting out, you want to start a YouTube channel, just pull the cell phone out of your pocket, go to the video app, hit record and start talking to it. You can edit. Like if you have an iPhone, I edit on iMovie, it's free. So I shoot on the iPhone, I edit on iMovie, and I upload on YouTube. You don't need a computer, you don't need anything else. You wanna start a YouTube channel, and the excuse that you're giving yourself is I don't have a camera yet, I haven't bought a camera, that's all bullshit. If you wanna start a YouTube channel, you can start a YouTube channel right now and it will take you about 30 minutes to get it all set up. And then guess what? Pull your camera out, your cell phone, pull out your cell phone, hit record, start talking to it. Guess what? Welcome to YouTube. Now you're a YouTuber. Even if the footage is grainy, which most cell phones these days, they're great. It's great quality. You don't need to think, be thinking about what camera am I gonna buy. If you're just starting, you need to be thinking about what video am I going to post right now today? Because you're going to learn from that first video. You're going to learn from that second video. And after you throw up about 50 videos from that cell phone and start to feel it out and say, okay, yeah, I want to be, I want to do more on YouTube. I want to up my game. Then you start investing money. After you put 50 videos up, you may not, you may be tired of this crap, you know? Take your channel down. A lot of people do that. And if you went out and bought, you know, a $1,200 camera, and after, you know, 50 videos later, you decide it's not for you, yeah, you can sell it, but you're gonna, you're gonna get like 40% of what you paid for it. You lost a lot of money. So I think good firm advice for me, probably from, any other YouTube person is pull out your cell phone, hit record, and start making video. Edit on a free program, upload. Sit back and let the comments and the critique 
and the criticism start flowing and then figure out do you want to be on YouTube and a lot of folks say they're gonna find out you don't want to be a youtuber all right so How many folks we got here now, my friends? I got messages coming across here. Okay, Ray Ray wants to know this this condo that we're in right now is about a grand a month, one thousand US. Now we're not staying here forever, but um, this is a one bedroom. Brand new building, rooftop pool, thousand a month. I'm not staying here uh, for much longer. We will uh, probably next month, next month or so, I'll be back down in the village, living in a bamboo hut, living rent free, my friends. But while we were here, um, we're taking advantage of this this living can, this living situation while we're here. It's worked out great for us. You can get a studio in this building for about 600 US per month, but over at that La Grande residence, it's, it's about the same. I think about 550, 600 a month, you can get a studio, it has a kitchenette, it has a balcony, you've got two pools, a, a workout room. Now folks, listen, that $600 a month, yes, that's a lot of money. Am I overpaying? Yes and no. Because I could go, I mean, within two miles from where I'm sitting I can find an apartment for 200 bucks a month 200 bucks a month you know decent place but I got to add internet and to add internet with fiber you got to sign a two-year contract I'm not here that long I'm too transient to get locked down like that most of those places they want a six-month lease I'm too transient to get locked down like that so as we go Wherever we go, our living conditions change. We adapt, and we really don't care. Um, I'm looking forward to heading back down to the village. And we're probably not even hit, hitting the $28 beach condo. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. I'm thinking about just spending a month in the village. That way, a little Forest G can hang out with, uh, with the family over there. And I love going to the village. You know, there's no running water, no air conditioning. You know, the electricity goes out half the time. I love it. You know, taking taking a cold ass bath in the in the shit house. Well, I mean, if you go down in the well, that water's cold as shit. But you know, you should watch my video about how to take a dump uh, in the outhouse at your wife's village. It's one of my old videos. I like to bring the water up in there, and let the sun start hitting that tin roof and warm it up, and then I take my bath inside the, the outhouse there. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, I'm enjoying my stay here. It's a beautiful place, beautiful building, beautiful view, but it's expensive. And next month when I go down to the village and I don't pay no rent, well then all of a sudden you can sort of look like, you can look at it like it offsets. So over a six month period, how much did I pay every month? All I gotta do to offset this rent where it's a reasonable monthly amount is just stay in the village longer see how that works and I love staying in the village anyhow you know I love camping I love the outdoors and the bad thing about the village is I got no real no real connectivity you got to hike up the hill just to get cell service so there won't be no live streams from the village uh, there's no capability where they're at but I will just be able to uh, you know upload some kick-ass videos I'm thinking what I'll do I'll stay there two weeks and then head down Head down to Cebu City and spend a night or two and upload all my stuff and catch up on everything. But yeah, so uh, the question was, how much was a condo? If, if you want a studio, just factor 600. If you want luxury accommodations, brand new building, pool, all that stuff, 600 a month here in Angeles City, you can live very, very well, my friends. But you don't have to. If you're gonna move here full time, 200 bucks a month, you can get a nice, uh, some nice accommodations.
Helen of Troy, Sardino. Well, her first name's Helen. And she's so beautiful that I figured uh, Helen of Troy was just appropriate for her. And she's a wonderful girl. Yeah, Donovan, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. Some, uh, he's recommending I do some camping videos out in the village. Yeah, people love that shit. You know what, I think the majority of my subscribers, um, you guys really love the, the $28 beach condo. You love those videos. That's what people tell me. People keep telling me, hey man, get out of Angeles City, go back to the beach condo. And, and I will. But we're gonna take it one step further and you just go to the village. And I think people will love that content. You know, like I said, living in the village, my, my wife's village, there's still no running water. There's a well and there's two outhouses. And what I told her was I was gonna buy a tent and put a big tent up in the village, right? And live in that tent, but I mean, and I could and I will and I may, but there's uh, her, her auntie who lives down in Cebu City now has a, has a vacant house and we usually just stay in there. But if I wanted to, I could, I could pop a tent. We just all live in that tent. Man, maybe I'll do it. Maybe that'd be, but I mean, her house is pretty much like a tent, you know, it's a bamboo. It's got a little metal roof, but you know, the, the houses like that are, are basically the equivalent of what we would call a shed in America. And I'm not casting stones at anybody or, or saying that in a derogatory sense. I'm just saying that try to describe how it's built. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, bamboo, uh, NEPA, you got a little metal roof, but, you know, there's space right here. You know what I mean? You, you don't want to put an air conditioner in there because it's not, it's more like a little hut, like a shed. Just get a fan and you're good to go. And if you got a fan, it keeps the mosquitoes off of you. And the mosquitoes really aren't bad in her village, but you still, uh, especially you know if you're you're not local, if you go hang out in your wife's village, whatever, make make sure you got a fan because you put that fan on you, it just keeps the mosquitoes off all night. You know they can't they can't fly over there and bite your ass if you got a fan on you. And you probably need it too. Yeah, so we got some cool cool videos coming and and no I've, I've never tried hammock camping I have spent a lot of time in hammocks but I've never specifically uh, took a, a hammock on a camping trip <clears throat> hey Troy what's going on my friend yeah I, I appreciate it man yeah I, I got a little carried away last night but as I said before, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens, my friends. And like I said, there is nothing scripted here. Nothing scripted. Nothing really censored. Cool, man. So down and out says he's got a fan and the mosquitoes still get you. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, it's a, it's an issue. Like the play pens, you know, the baby's play pens here, they all come, you know, if you buy stuff here, this region, like when we bought the play pens, all the play pens come with mosquito nets. You know, and I don't know if you buy a play pen in America, if it comes with a mosquito net or not, I don't know. But here, they all come with mosquito nets. So, if you, you know, when we go down to the village, Nashville checking in. Man, I love Nashville. You know, uh, we go down to the village, you know, little Forrest G's got a got his own playpen. And then when we tuck him in for the night, you just put that uh, that mosquito net over the top of the playpen. And so he's good. But us inside the hut, you know, my solution is to just put a fan. But if the power goes out, which it does often, then you're at the mercy of the damn mosquitoes. They, they, they will eat you up. Yeah, time for a net over the bed. Well, see, that's the thing about it, because in, in the village, there are no beds. Okay, you got a bamboo floor, and the bamboo floor has like the bamboo slats, and there's like that much space in between. So when you look down, you look down through the floor, you see the ground, and it's 
sort of by design so all the sand and the dirt that you track in it just falls you know falls through the little bamboo slats we ain't got no beds there you sleep on the floor you sleep on the bamboo um, you know put a blanket down sleep on that blank that bamboo so yeah I could I could make a net I just put a put a bamboo pole up make a net around us but typically I just I just rely on the fan and if the fan goes out I just I just endure it I just sweat it out okay my friend Brian wants to know okay Filipinas are very jealous I agree how did I pull it off man it's sort of like what I've been talking about about authenticity about being yourself about being real I just decided, I decided uh, a while back that I was no longer going to lie to any woman. I said, you know what, I'm too old to be telling these lies. I am not going to exert one second of effort to lie to a woman about my whereabouts, my likes, my dislikes, my friends my activities I'm not lying to nobody nobody's gonna tell me what to do I'm the king of this castle and I am not afraid to be the only member of my kingdom and I just said you know what I'm not lying uh, to anybody so my ladies, I told them this, you, you have one option. You do have options. Your option is to love me. That's it. It doesn't go any further than that. And basically I just up front said, listen, I'm gonna have more than one woman. That's the way it's gonna be. That's how I wanna live my life. And that actually works so much better for me because of my whole life I've had more than one woman, whether I was married or not. Always had chicks on the side. And then what happens? All right, the side chick knows about your wife, but the wife don't know about the side chick. Next thing you know, the wife finds out about the side chick and then she wants to divorce and try to take all your money. I'm like, isn't it much better if we just all, if I had two or three ladies at the house and they know about each other. There's no secrets. There's no deception. It's just the way it is. And what I learned was, folks, women, women don't really care over the physical act of you, you know, sticking your cock in her fucking best friend. It's all physical. They don't care about that. It's the deception, the lies, and the uncertainty, the insecurities, the instability that it creates. Because what she thinks is, it goes back to like a caveman survival mindset, right? When your wife catches you with a new girl, subliminally, you know what she's thinking? The new girl is going to take my house, car, man, my income, my stability and my security and everything else that's what it really comes down to they don't give a damn that for you know an hour or two you were boning this chick out in the fucking back of your truck she don't care about that that's like 0.2 percent of it it's the deception the lies the deceit the uncertainty of what's going to happen to me now so you know uh, folks, I'm a goddamn caveman. And I don't lie to my ladies. I don't lie to my ladies. I'm not going to change the way I, I am or how I act or what I do. Certain things they don't like about me, I'm sure. But they got, they got options. The option is to love me. Last night I got drunk as hell, got stupid. You know what? What's your option? Love me. This is who I am. And they love me because I'm not pulling no bullshit and I'm not lying and I'm not sneaking around and there's no uncertainty. 
they know occasionally I'm gonna get drunk and get stupid. They know that I got crazy friends from around the world that at a moment's notice may fly into this place and I'm gonna go hang out with them in the fucking strip club for a goddamn week at a time. So it, it, it just, the, the, the answer to the question, my friends, yeah, what works for me is that I'm just my, I'm being myself and I don't lie about it and I'm not sneaking around. If I go in there right now and tell these ladies, and they're, they're watching my live stream, I'm sure, they usually watch me in there, chill out, and they laugh. If I go in there right now and tell them, hey, I'm adding one more chick to the mix, she'll be here in 20 minutes. That's the way it's gonna be. And they love me. And a lot of people, they can't understand it. They can't understand how I pull it off or they can't understand why these girls deal with me, blah, blah. Okay, I got it, I got it. I'm bucking the system. I'm bucking the American system that I came from, you know? But that's the way I wanna live my life. So it just, it just all boils down to that I'm the king and I'm the king of this castle and that's how I'm gonna live. And I'm not gonna fucking lie to these ladies or any other ladies. I'm too old and I'm not, I'm not doing that shit. The ladies are allowed to do anything they wanna do and pursue their own happiness. But no, if they're living in my kingdom, then I'm the king, my friend, well, come on. Is it a double standard? Standard, absolutely. And I'm gonna tell you this. Folks, the logistics of having two or three ladies, once the ladies get over the initial jealousy, they love it. Do you know how much work it is for one woman to take care of kids, clean the house, do the shopping, whatever? Okay, it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of logistics involved. What if you got two ladies? All of a sudden now, one can go to the market, one can stay here with the kids, and they just 50-50 on their workload. If I go down and bring one more chick up here, which I may do here in the near future, got my eye, got my eye on a, on a, on a new queen coming into the kingdom, now it's a third of the workload. One goes to the market, one's cooking, one's watching the kids. I made their life easier. Their life is easier because I got multiple chicks and there ain't no lies. See how that works? That's right, they're sisters. They're sister wives. They love each other. Hell, if I got hit by a jeepney today, they would they would probably stay together. They're they're just like this. You know what I mean? All right, folks, we kind of got off on a tangent. Um, so if you just joined us about the best camera for YouTube, the best camera for YouTube, my friends, is the cell phone that's in your pocket. Right there it is. I'm broadcasting live with an iPhone 8 Plus. All you need is that, a, a lapel mic, and a little tripod. That's the best camera for YouTube right there. So if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, go ahead and start it right now. Stop thinking about what camera you need. Just go sign up. I mean, you already got a YouTube account. You're watching this probably. So all you gotta do is pull that camera out of your pocket, hit record, start talking to it, upload the video. That's how you learn. It's hands-on learning with YouTube. At least for me it is, it, it still is. I learn every day. And you know, if you put up 50 videos and it looks like you're, you're getting some traction and you wanna take it to the next level, then you can go ahead and invest in some camera equipment and, and, and step it up a bit. But the best camera for YouTube in my opinion, is the cell phone in your pocket. And 
and I prefer iPhone because I use iMovie to edit and it's real simple. I'm into simplicity. All right, cool. So we've got 110 folks here watching now. Thanks everybody for joining me. All right, yeah. So we went from talking about we went from talking about the best camera on YouTube to uh, me living with two ladies. Troy Butt says uh, we're 227 subscribers to hit the 10,000 mark. Cool, man. I didn't know we were that close. I I mean, I do look at it, but yeah, when you put it that way, 227 more, that's cool, man. Because I think that's going to be a, a milestone. Like a big milestone for me was 1,000, and then once you hit 1,000, and folks, you know what, be, let me talk about that. Be, like if you have less than 1,000 subscribers, you know, you can be very intertwined with everyone, right? Because you're, you're getting an amount a quantity of communication coming your way that you can respond to everybody. And in my experience, in my opinion, once you hit a thousand subscribers, that magic number is when you get too big to uh, respond to everybody. And your early subscribers will say, oh man, now you're too big for your britches, you know, you, uh, you can't respond to my comments anymore, whatever. It's, it's not about that, you know, about you getting you know, big headed or what, however you want to call it. It's about the fact that once you hit a, a, a thousand subscribers, there's just so many pieces of information coming your way that you physically cannot respond to. You would have to hire people to respond to everything. And that's not my model. My, my model is not to, to have these ladies in here answering my emails or to pay some interns or whatever or you know, pay some employees or get some interns to respond to correspondence. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, some people do, but that, that's not my model. But, but once you hit a thousand subscribers, if you're starting your YouTube channel, just get ready that it's not gonna be personal like it was in the beginning. You know, uh, uh, Benny the Max channel is probably a good example. Right now, I think Benny, Benny's like broke 500, I think. Benny's, Benny's channel's growing fast. And right now, you know, he probably knows most of his subs by, by name and responding to the comments and what have you. That's all fine. But once Benny's channel hits about a thousand, he can, he, you can't physically respond to that many pieces of uh, communication. And it's not just on YouTube. You've got emails coming in, you know, comments on your website. And it's very flattering and honoring. You know, I'm honored by it. Uh, but but there's just a physical time limitation. There's not enough hours in a day to film, drink, have, you know, uh, get some sleep because it's so many pieces of communication and it's awesome. But just a just a side note on that. If you're going to start a channel, uh, I think a thousand is a milestone, and then once it hit five thousand, it was like holy shit. 5,000 subscribers, wow. And so coming up on 10,000. Okay, and book, uh, if I'm saying it right, Booksol Book or Bucksaw Keith, some channels die at 1,000. Yeah, I yeah, I, I agree. Some, cha some, some channels just stall out, and you know, that's a concern. That's a worry that you're gonna have in your mind if you start a channel. You know, what's gonna happen? but you just can't let that shit affect you. All right, so Benny's over 500, 565. See, he's, his channel's going fast. Boom, Vince Walker with the green flash coming across my screen, my friend. Thank you very much. Keep the super chats going. Thank you very much. I got the beautiful Helen of Troy wearing some beautiful shorts today, and she just took my glass to go get me a jacket and coat, my friends. Yeah, thank you very much, Vince Walker. Ron, Jeremy, I'm, I'm not drunk at all right now. I'm just sipping on some Jack, man. I'm still a little hungover, but I'm, I'm straight. Yeah, so, so Benny's channel, and, and you know, if you're not subscribed to Benny the Max channel, go over there. Great videos, great content. He's just as crazy as I am. And you'll, you'll get similar content over there. But he's back in Australia right now doing some fishing videos, crab fishing, or, you know, crabbing. 
So that's interesting as hell too. But once Benny hits a thousand, I think that's a milestone of like once you hit a thousand, you physically can't reply to everybody. Uh, Five thousand, it was just like what you know chaos. So ten thousand, I'm I'm looking forward to hitting that number and just just keep going forward. But if you're gonna start a channel, don't don't worry about failing. You know what I mean? It's the old cliche sayings, right? You can't hit a home run unless you swing that bat. Swing the bat. Take the shot. I mean, just, just get it going. See what happens. You never know. Do you, do you think that any of these huge YouTube guys, um, I, I can't remember their names. The, the top YouTubers on here. Do you think when they started their channel, that they thought or they knew they were going to get millions and millions of subscribers I mean they believed in themselves like anything any business right anything you do you got to believe in yourself you got to believe that it's coming and tell yourself success is coming just like I keep telling myself I know eventually You know, eventually, folks, I'm going to Hollywood, all right? YouTube is a, is a stepping stone for me. I'm going to Hollywood in some form or fashion. I'm going to Hollywood. That's the way it is. Welcome to Hollywood. What's your dream? So all these big-time YouTube guys and, and gals, the YouTube folks that are millions and millions of subscribers, they started out with zero subscribers. Once you post that channel, guess how many subscribers you got? Zero. And you go from there, like everybody else. You might get a hundred and stall out. You might get a million and, and be famous. Who knows? Swing the fucking bat because life is short, my friends. Hey, if you're getting disruptions in the stream, um, I don't know, folks. Sometimes, my, you know, if the internet here gives a little hiccup. If you're live streaming on YouTube, okay, like if I just fire off on the iPhone, it does like the middle setting of quality slash latency, whatever. And you can go in there and change it. You can go into YouTube Studio, I think, while well, I do it on my laptop. You can change it to where it's better quality, but then you better have some banging internet, right? Or it's gonna hang up. And then you can do low quality, which will stay real time, but the quality is degraded. I'm at the middle setting. I guess it's called a normal latency. Yeah, Viking mode, man. I, I do what I can, man. And But but here here's the thing. I know everybody wants me to respond to the comments, and I wish I could. But I think what everybody really wants, they want content, you want entertainment. And so my live streams and my premieres for me is my opportunity to devote my time to, to looking at con uh, comments, you know, re replying on the premiere. The premiere works great for me because that is my dedicated time as fast as I can type, respond to whatever you know it's coming my way but to sit down with I got I don't know 200 videos I think it's about 200 videos when you have 200 videos there's comments coming in on not every video every day but you have 200 potential streams uh, to bring comments in um, so again it's just physically physically not possible but the best model for me is to do the premiere feature where you upload a video as normal but there's the live chat box where I can reply so I watch the video with the subscribers I'm in the live chat box and that works good for me okay so all right Bucksaw Keith says I'm dead at 1300 I don't have the time to give it daily okay so are you you're saying that you you basically plateaued at 1,300 subscribers.
Okay. I'm going to do a video, and I'm going to... I've already started making a list. And you know what? I'll save it for that video. But the video is going to be called... Or, you know what? I'll do a live stream. I'm going to call it something like Nine Ways to Screw Up a YouTube Channel. <laughs> and it's just notes that I made about why my YouTube channel is not growing and what I'm doing wrong, whatever. And it's all common sense. Like for... For a 20 year old guy, this is all common sense. For a 46 year old dude like me, you know, who grew up in the age of, you know, what's that? Well, that's the computer. You know, I, I remember the first time I saw a computer in school, right? So, my generation, folks, we're not up on this shit. A 20 year old guy, if he fires up a YouTube channel, he grew up, he knew this shit from the time he was nine years old. But I'm going to do a live stream and I'm going to call it something like nine ways to screw up a YouTube channel. And I'm going to talk about that. And I'm going to save it for then. I'm going to save it for why you're plateaued. I'm going to, because I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. I'm just going to speak from personal experience and I'm going to, I'll save it for that video about why you're plateaued at 1300 subscribers. Okay, so National Guardsman, you're retired, got all the time in the world to vlog, fishing videos. Man, people love fishing videos. They love them. And after this live stream, I'm going to go watch Benny the Max uh, boat video and checking his crab traps. People love fishing videos, man. They always have. Look at all these rednecks that got, you know, made millions and millions of dollars bass fishing. So people love fishing videos. So if you want to, you want to, and, and plus that's a good clean channel. If you do nothing but fishing and don't curse, dude, you're going to get sponsors. You can make money off of that. You can get, you know, uh, sponsors, uh, free products. You have a good time if you just run a nice clean uh, fishing, fishing videos, cooking the fish, little narration, telling stories, no cursing, man, you, you can... I mean, it might be a hobby for you, but you can make money off of that. All right, Bitcoin. Um, folks, that's, that's a whole topic. My little brother, his channel is called Crypto Titan. I think it's C-R-Y-P-T-O. -R yeah, Crypto Titan, T-Y-T-A-N. Him and his buddies, they know all that crap about all the digital currencies. Uh, he's doing live streams, videos, they talk about that. Bitcoin, you know, maybe I, this is a whole separate topic. So I don't want to get on the crypto topic right now because there is something that somebody gave me a tip on a while back. I will pass it on to everybody, but I'll do it in, an, in another video. Okay. Okay, so they say there's only a few Bitcoin ATM machines in the Philippines. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. Okay, here's a good question. How do, how do you get your thoughts all together to write a book? Man, if you go to my website and click on about, I tell the story of the advice that my buddy Abe gave to me. Now, Abe at the time was a co-worker and he had written a book. And it, it, he wrote a book about um, Uh, basically about terrorism and some other topics, but he wrote a book to, you know, had it published by a small publishing house. I say small, a publishing house in California, right? So he had a no shit publisher. So, hey, you know, I got a buddy. He's a published author. I want to write a book. Let me go talk to Abe. And you can read the whole account on my website. Go to markblacker.com, hit about and down at the bottom. It's how I, my inspiration, whatever, about writing. And Abe's advice was this, just start writing. 
okay? It don't get any more complicated than that, okay? Just start writing. Abe said, he said, uh, start writing. At some point, you got to stop writing, and in between is a book. Every time you pick up your manuscript, you're going to change something, delete something, edit something. At some point, you have to put down the pen, stop typing. That's a book. Okay, but how do I collect my thoughts? I'm, I'm, I'm working on a third book right now. And when I say working on it, I've got the title, the plot, the concept. Everything is in here. It's in my head. So after writing two books, how do I organize this third book? Basically, what I do what I'm doing is I'm building the chapters you know I use InDesign it's by Adobe it's, it's not a cheap program but if you want to have your book laid out no shit professional you need to use Adobe InDesign so in Adobe InDesign on the, the table of contents page that's where I start I'm basically listing out the chapters of, of how I want this thing to go and then I could theoretically go write chapter seven and then go write chapter two. I don't have to write it in order, chronological. As thoughts pop into my head, I just go into that chapter and I add what I gotta, what I gotta say. So like if I'm riding down the road and some thought comes to mind, I'll just write notes and then boom, I go plug it in where it needs to be plugged into. So it's kind of a patchwork of doing it. Now sometimes I will sit down and I will write, in the past I wrote a whole chapter, you know, just chronological. A lot of stuff I did do chronological. But even if you write chapter one and two, by the time you get to chapter eight, you're going to go back to chapter one and two and write some more. So how do I collect my thoughts? How am I collecting my thoughts to get this third book underway? I'm writing the chapters, whether it's 8, 10, 11, however many chapters, and then I'm going to go from there. So I know that's a long story to say I, I, uh, I'm writing the, chap the, the title of the chapter. That's how I'm going to organize it. And from there, I just start drinking rum. I wrote both my books basically drunk on rum. Okay, for whatever reason, rum has the properties that make me a creative creative writer. If I drink Jack Daniels, I can't write. If I drink beer, I'm not a writer. I can talk, but when I hit rum and coke with a lime, folks, I can type like lightning fast and just shit just comes out of my brain. And the next day I'm like, damn, I don't even remember writing that shit. So organize your chapter titles, start drinking rum. It worked for Hemingway, it worked for me. There needs to be a sequel to the Chronicles because when that book was written, folks, that's that's uh, that's what I wrote that book. I guess 2013, 14, shit. I, that book is like five years old, folks. Since I wrote that book, let's see. I think I've chalked up another divorce. J Dog chalked, chalked up a couple divorces, maybe three. And I think Pablo chalked up a divorce. Folks, there's been a lot developed since I wrote The King's Chronicle. So, yeah, there needs to be a sequel because I've learned so much more shit the hard way. You know, if you read that book, not all of that book is pretty. But it's kind of like, you know, if you tell somebody, if I just say, hey, Make sure you practice safe sex, especially when you're talking to younger younger guys. That goes in this year, it comes out this year. They're not gonna listen. But when you sit down and explain to this dude, hey man, yo bro, this is why you need to fucking practice safe sex and wear a condom. It's because I caught the clap once back over in the backwoods of fucking Cambodia and there wasn't no damn medical clinic nearby and I was pissing razor blades for fucking two weeks. Till I got to Phnom Penh to a fucking clinic to get some antibiotics. Then all of a sudden the young guy starts visualizing this picture and says, holy shit. And then when he rolls out to the club, he makes sure he's got a damn rubber in his pocket. You see how that works. 
So the purpose of the Kings Chronicles, we aired out some of our dirty laundry because we wanted young guys to learn from our jaded, you know, uh, well, learn from our mistakes in a jaded fashion. And that's a lot of the purpose why I run this YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm here in the entertainment business. You know, yeah, I got Hills Angels rolling through. So that's a lot of the purpose of this channel. I am in the entertainment business, but as a side effect, I want to share some of my experiences. So if I get hit by a damn jeepney and I'm dead today, which is very possible, you know, we could all, this could be my last live stream at any time. You don't know how, how long you're going to live. So if I put this shit out on YouTube and it, it helps one younger guy, it's worth it for me. It's worth, everything's worth it. If one guy comes on my drunken live streams and says, you know what? That guy is acting like a jackass. And maybe that's how I look when I drink. Maybe I'm going to quit drinking. Or whatever, that's just an example, right? I'm just trying to invoke thought in my younger males and invoke this thought by just basically airing out the dirty laundry, all right? So that's a lot, a lot of what, what I do. Okay, folks, if you're just joining me, let me go back over one more time because we, we get off topic here. Best camera for YouTube is the cell phone in your pocket that's it don't be thinking about buying a camera or investing in any any cameras just pull the cell phone out of your pocket put it on a tripod get you a lapel mic you'd invest about 150 bucks and start shooting video on your cell phone upload it to YouTube welcome to YouTube my friends and then after you post 50, 50 videos or a year and you decide you want to be professional YouTuber and take it to the next level then invest in a camera okay back to the comments here and if, if somebody sent any super chat funds while I was looking at this I don't think so I don't want anybody to slip through the cracks but sometimes when I get to talking it does the stream just goes by too fast. Okay, uh, no, I didn't. Giant and Kandahar. I don't know, man. I, that don't ring a bell. But I will tell you this. I don't know about Giants and Kandahar, but out in a place called Harat, which is out near, uh, I guess, Harat's towards the Iranian border out that way. In Harat, there is a great restaurant that is staffed um, by little people is that the, is that the fucking term we're using these days uh, little people midgets and folks I don't say that in a derogatory sense right when I say let's go to midget boxing down there okay my friends in that place they they don't they don't care they don't they're not so goddamn sensitive whether somebody says it's midget boxing or little people boxing. You know, it's all the fucking Starbucks keyboard warriors in America. When I say let's go to midget boxing, they hit me. Oh my God, you're exploiting the poor little people. No. It's just fucking terminology. And, and I'll tell you, all my friends down there, okay, at the ringside bar in Makati, okay, they're, they're cool as shit, and they, they don't give a damn what the name of the bar is, right? So, anyhow. Yeah, fuck being politically correct. Exactly. My buddies down there, they don't care. They, it's like a non-issue. You know what I mean? Only People make it an issue, and the fact that people make it an issue, it just makes it weird for everybody else. But my friends down there don't give a fuck what you call them. You know what? They got a name. Just call them by their name. The only reason I say midget boxing because everybody knows that when you say that. If I say ringside bar, nobody knows. What's ringside bar? But when you say midget boxing, everybody knows, you know? And I highly recommend if you're in Makati, 
Go hang out with my buddies down there at Ringside Bar. It's at the end. It's right there off of Burgo Street. You walk up Burgo Street where all the all the strip clubs are. Cross over that road. It's right there on the corner. It's called Ringside Bar. I did a video on it. It's on my Five Days in Burgos video. And folks, all right. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. My iPhone is about to go dead. It's been a champion. Now I could plug in and stay on, but I can't keep this lapel mic going and the audio is not gonna be good with all the street noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this live stream. I wanna say that I, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today. Uh, again, what's the best camera for YouTube? Folks, it's a cell phone in your pocket. You want to start a YouTube channel, pull out the cell phone, hit record, start talking to it, upload the video. You can even edit it on your phone. I wouldn't spend I wouldn't spend any money other than this lapel mic and that tripod. I would not spend any money until I had published 50, I say 100. Let's go to 100 videos. Until you publish 100 videos, don't spend any money on a camera. Okay, it's just, it's gonna be a paperweight or a toy if you give up on YouTube, okay? So, um, everybody that joined me, thanks for joining me. Thanks for everybody who sent Super Chat money to me and the ladies. Thanks for everybody who bought my books. And again, they are available on Amazon. The link to all this stuff is down in the description. And the, uh, the Amazon links are all affiliate links. So if you buy any of those products, yeah, we take a little, small commission and I want to thank you in advance if you do Curtis Carter one last question yes it's in there it's in there Mita and I can't remember the name but yes it's run by little people I think it's called the Hobbit house and yeah it's right there on uh, Del Pilar right down from the Southern Cross Hotel National Guardsman thanks for uh, for joining me and JB, peace out. And folks, I'll see you on the next live stream. The next live stream, the next video, and the next adventure. I do have a video coming up. I went over to the Jazz Grill and listened to some of their music over there. It's a little, sort of like a little outdoor place next to the bridge over by Robinson's. So I'll, I'll have that posted in the next day or so. But I wanna thank everybody for joining me and have a great day wherever you're at in the world my friends because it is a beautiful day coming to you live from the philippines